Hey guys, it's Abs Fitness UK here and welcome to my first ever YouTube video. excited to be with you guys today and to be sharing my fitness journey and just before we get started I'm going to tell you a few facts about me. So for those of you who don't know me already my real name unfortunately is not Abs Fitness UK. My name is Abby and I am 21 years old. I currently live in London and I've been here for the past four years because I moved down when I was 18 to go to drama school and I moved from Glasgow in Scotland if you cannot tell from my accent. Literally since I moved down four years ago people just rip the absolute piss about stuff I say but in, in my where I am it's right you know it's the alphabet A B C D E F G H I J I and here they say H I J K it's J I it's J like Surely they can't be teaching us the alphabet wrong, you know? So my fitness, self-love and well-being journey started kind of at the end of 2017. I had moved to London in the summer of 2017 and I honestly had so much fun. I was going out drinking all the time, I was eating McDonald's all the time, just eating whatever I wanted. I wasn't exercising, I wasn't running but my mental health was at an all-time low. I didn't really realise it at the time because I just thought everyone kind of feels a wee bit sad all the time, but it was only later on in that year when it deteriorated that I realised it was an issue. So at the end of 2017, I was kind of finishing up for the Christmas holidays in my foundation course with all my friends and we went on a night out and unfortunately on that night out one of our friends, eh, Laura, was killed in a serious car accident in which we were all involved in. And my mental health and everyone's mental health has obviously it, it deteriorated from bad to worse. I have been so lucky in my life to never really have anyone pass away before. And I've been really, really lucky um, that I've never been involved with anything too traumatic. But that night, and still to this day, I carry it with me, was the worst time of my life. I was honestly going home that Christmas. I was so depressed. I was so anxious. It was, it was really, really awful. And I didn't really know how to get out of it. And so at the start of 2018, I made the decision mentally that, do you know what, I'm bloody lucky to be here and I have got this life and I need to live it and I want to live it to the fullest and do you know what, I'm actually not very happy in the skin that I'm in, I'm not really happy in the body I'm in, I don't feel necessarily that good. So I decided to do something a little bit crazy, which is usual for me, a little bit crazy. I decided to apply for the London Marathon. I did not run. I did not exercise, I did not eat well, I was overweight. So essentially the worst idea, but also the best idea that I've ever had. This was something that I just felt like I, I felt like I had to do and I wanted to be strong obviously on the outside, everyone wants to be strong on the outside but I really wanted to be strong on the inside. After all the trauma and pain and heartbreak that I'd gone through that Christmas in 2017 I wanted to show myself that I am so much stronger than I ever thought I was. Oh it's not the bloody X factor I'm gonna start crying in a minute. <laughs> and an amazing charity Brain Research UK asked me to run for them I'm so grateful for them and I raised £2,000 so I had so many supporters and it was honestly the best day and I ran it in five hours which I was so so pleased with because your gal had never run before. <laughs> 
and I'd done it in four months. So I was so, so pleased with that. And along with that came my account called Abs Fitness UK. And I was kind of blogging about my marathon experience and kind of showing people at home what I was doing because obviously people back in Glasgow couldn't see what I was doing in London. So over 2018 and 2019, I was kind of getting into the gym. So at the start, no bloody clue what I was doing literally I would go and like run in the cross trainer for like half an hour and count that as a gym session which is it's still working out but I was getting really frustrated because I was like why don't I have a six pack it's like hun you need to lift a weight if you want like any muscle definition I also bought a plan at the time to kind of yeah just give me more of an understanding of what was going on with my body and like what to do at the gym so I did that over 2018 and 2019 and yeah my mental health became so much better I was still running and feeling really really good and I was really happy within myself so this takes us to 2019 in 2019 that's the year where it kind of a lot of stuff changed for me within my fitness journey I kind of became a lot more aware of what I was doing in the gym so I was able to focus on different muscle groups and actually know what I was doing without feeling nervous or intimidated in the gym as well that was a big part of it for me and I started kind of noticing what I was putting in my body so eating a lot healthier and overall feeling really 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 good I then came back to London for my second year at drama school and at the time, just after Freshers um, in 2019, my boyfriend at the time broke up with me. Traumatic <laughs> experience. Because we were together for, I think, about two years. And we have this weird thing in our society, male and female, that when someone breaks up with you, you need to go through a glow up. The thing is, I had worked my butt off for two years to become the best version version of myself and I when I was dumped I was already a pretty good like what I felt a pretty good version of me I was really happy with who I was I took it on that I wasn't good enough and that I needed to change do not do this you are already enough please you are already enough so more than enough I thought the one way I could change oh I'll just I'll just lose a wee bit more weight I was already really really tiny so for the whole of the end of 2019, I was just like getting smaller and smaller portion sizes. I was getting smaller and smaller and I shrunk myself and I also shrunk my life. It made me really, really anxious all the time. I didn't want to go out. I didn't want to see my family. I didn't want to see my friends. And that was really, really difficult. And I kind of started, was starting to overcome that at the start of 2020, which takes us to now. The year 2020. My God. Oh, 2020. So, the year 2020. It's been a bit of a mess, hasn't it? So, I'd moved down um, January, February after Christmas, feeling really good. February was my 21st, had such a good time, had a massive party, it was great. Then Corona decided to come along and ruin everything. So coronavirus came along and I obviously had to go back to Glasgow and be with my family for five months, I think it was, which is the longest I've ever been at home since I moved away. Through the weight loss and getting on top of my mental health, it was this year that a lot of stuff changed for me. I developed an eating disorder over lockdown. <laughs> I didn't think that it was an eating disorder at the time because I just said I had an issue with eating because nobody ever wants to say, oh, I've got an eating disorder. But I was so scared over lockdown because the gyms were shut. I was so scared that I was going to put on weight. So. I decided to just kind of eat less and less and less, exercise more and more. I was running 10k like three times a week. So I was running 10 kilometers three times a week. Home workouts every day of lockdown. And I was eating about 1,200 calories. 
my relationships with so many people changed. My relationships with my family over lockdown changed. My relationships with my friends changed. I didn't want to see anyone. So I was so lucky at the time I was able to confined in friends and also confined in my godmother Pam who conveniently is also a dietitian. My mum is also a dietitian but we decided through the recovery process that it would probably be better to go with Pam because mum is obviously so so close to me and Pam was honestly my saving grace during this time. She um, came up with all these like meal plans and meals for me to have and we would we put the scales to the side say goodbye to the scales and we actually started doing my body fat percentage which is so much more helpful and useful than scales because scales have a different reading every like two seconds so I've completely stopped weighing myself but I do feel like at this point I am now at a place where I'm actually genuinely happy with who I am and what I look like not how I feel on the outside and how I am on the inside and it is due to these people like Pam and like my mum that have really, really helped me out. That then takes us to now. Um, so yeah, where am I now? I am officially, I want to say recovered, but there, I do still have days of like, oh, like I ate that yesterday. I need to kind of restrict a wee bit today but those days are getting a lot less than they were because I was doing it every day so that happens like once a month now and hopefully in the near future it just won't happen at all and I won't need to think about it but my gym sessions are really productive I know exactly what I'm doing I'm following a plan my relationships with my family and friends are really really good and yeah I'm just so excited to see what abs fitness um, has in store for me over the next few years I absolutely love doing it I love Love sharing with you guys. I also love talking about the stuff that nobody bloody ever talks about because so much was missed for me in school to do with sex and periods and the female body and women's health and yeah, just eating and fitness and just keeping on top of your mental health that was all missed for me so I really want to provide that place where people can go and educate themselves and look at one of my posts and actually learn something. If the past four years have taught me anything through the heartbreak and the grief and being overweight and being underweight and being a normal weight and being too fat and too thin and literally having an eating disorder and having all these terms like put on you that you are this and you are that, push them all off you are enough you have always been enough and we are under this kind of umbrella of i am this and i am that you are whoever you bloody well want to be thank you for listening to my fitness journey and listening to me ramble on i honestly am so so grateful for everyone that has watched this and for everyone that supported me so far on this journey so thank you so much for watching and i will see you very soon I don't have corona, just to say I have a sore throat.